Hello, everybody. Welcome to GitOpsCon North America 2021. I'm super happy to be here. I am doing a 10-minute lightning talk today on GitOps and the CD pipeline. So it's going to be quick. And in that 10 minutes, my goal is to get you thinking about what the CD pipeline is going to look like when we have, when we're using GitOps to do deployments and we're in a microservices environment. Things are just being disrupted by microservices. The CD pipeline is particularly um, vulnerable to being disrupted because of microservices. And GitOps changes the way we do deployments. So how are we going to do it with lots of microservices? So let's start at the beginning. Um, GitOps came from IAC, inf um, you know, infrastructure as code. Uh, that worked really well, so it kind of, kind of morphed into supporting applications, and that's what we call GitOps today. And when we first started doing this, we did it for containerized applications, uh, which meant that we had pretty much one YAML file. Uh, we created a YAML file for doing our deployment of our containerized application. We created a separate environment repository to store that YAML file, and the GitOps operator basically reads from it. Uh, and that takes care of the problem for us. And it's beautiful, it's audited, everything works quite well. But that was one YAML file per containerized application, right? Easy peasy. When we did that, we had at probably maybe three, four different YAML files we had to manage through the GitOps process. You know, in a typical pipeline, we have dev, test, and prod. And the way we normally do this GitOps process is we branch the, um, the environment repository for that YAML file to handle the different configurations needed for dev, test, and prod. So when a new container gets, a new application container got created, we grabbed the new SHA, we updated the YAML file to um, address any environment variable differences or key value pairs between the, the dev, test, and prod environments. Um, and we manage those YAML, that, that single YAML file in those three different branches. That allowed us to create a life cycle within that GitOps model. So, and in some cases, you may have just one main trunk with multiple YAML files that the operator interrogates. That's another way that, could, that it could be done, but most people branch it out. So now let's add this microservices uh, uh, puzzle to, the, to this particular scenario. So, you know, microservices can be complicated. They shouldn't be. We're getting better at doing them. More tooling's coming out to help with it. But Talking about microservices in a GitOps model means that we're going to manage a lot more files. Uh, and we're going to have to manage the, those additional files across the pipeline. And those files add up kind of fast. Um, it's, it's not, you know, we talk to people who are saying they're doing 10 microservices to 100 microservices to 500 microservices. And if we just go with 10, we're going to add up quite quickly. But in our scenario, we're only going to have a few. So let's talk about this. We're going to have more than one YAML file in this scenario where we have a candy store cluster and a hipster store cluster. We share between those shipping, payment, and um, the cart service between those two websites. Now in this case, we're going to have four YAML files, YAML files per, um, per state or per cluster. We're going to have the front end of the candy store or the hipster store, and we're going to have the cart service, the shipping, and um, the payment YAML files. Now, if we um, think about what that looks like going to a single um, one big cluster, if the, in this particular scenario they have created namespaces for the cart shipping and payment service plus the candy store in the front end and the hipster store front end, and we have these YAML files that are going out to support those. So it gets big quick. So instead of having one, one YAML file to support our containerized application, we're going to have lots of YAML files, and that's what creates the, con the complexity in, in microservice in many ways, not just in this one, but in many ways. So now we're going to add the pipeline. We're going to have that environment for development, we're going to have that environment for test, and we're going to have that environment for production. So it can add up a, l a lot faster than you realize. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five YAML files, including th with each of their front ends. And now we have 15 YAML files that we're managing. 
and that's all in different repositories because each of those are going to be managed in their own um, GitHub repository that represents their environment if you're doing it that way. Other ways to do it, but still you're going to have a lot of YAML files no matter how you slice it. So as I said, we're getting better at um, really thinking about how to manage microservices. Uh, one of those ways is the emergence of the microservice catalog. Uh, if you haven't heard of one before, they're new. Um, you take a, you're really thinking about a service catalog, but it's a microservice service catalog. And that service catalog is a unified uh, catalog of microservice configuration data, including things like the SHA and key value pairs and, and pretty important ownership. It stores and, and versions that information um, and tracks the tag for each new version of a microservice. And this information can be used to generate YAML files based on the environment uh, key value pairs. So one of these problems is to take the human element out of um, the GitOps process and start doing more uh, code generation and a microservice catalog stores a lot of that, it hoards a lot of that information about um, uh, a microservice and can be used to do that. So it can be used to generate the YAML files based on the environment and it can be triggered, um, it can be a triggered event that creates a pull request in place of a deployment step, gets it into the correct environment with the correct data, the correct SHA, the correct uh, key value information um, and, and can also automate the uh, commit based on policies. So you might be able to define policies that says this is a good to go and you can automate the commit if, if the team allows it. In essence, what I'm talking about is automating the, the human side of DevOps all the way through the GitOps process. We've always been um, automating DevOps and we strive to in the continuous delivery uh, kind of philosophy. And what we need to do now is think about how we can do that with a GitOps deployment model with lots of microservices. So this new market um, is starting to emerge when, it, when we talk about um, service catalog. This is a, a great article. If you don't follow um, Tyler Jewell, I highly recommend you do. He writes some amazing, well-researched articles. Um, he, he recently in this article, he, uh, he forecasted two trends. One, the emergence of the service catalog, and two, the convergence of continuous delivery and GitOps, and the new market that that will create. And then actually, if you, when you really look at the problem set, both of these, uh, these markets, the service catalog market around microservices, along with this convergence of GitOps uh, and continuous delivery, is what's really starting to create this, this new marketplace. So think about the pipeline as looking like this. You get a container registry push. So as soon as the, uh, con a new container has been registered um, to, the, to, to a container registry, something gets triggered to update the catalog. And when it does so, it pulls all that SHA information. The catalog then can, can hoards that data until a, a deployment is triggered. At the point in time that a deployment is triggered, then it, the, the YAML file is generated and a pull request is created. Once that commit is executed, we're going to put that we're going to push that that forward, and it's going to um, be pushed out to the the end targets. Automating these steps are w what will be critical to be able to achieve success in both microservices in a Git in a GitOps model. And oh yeah, meet the speaker. I didn't know if I'd have time. I am Tracy Reagan. I am the CEO of Deploy Hub. I'm a microservice evangelist, super passionate about configuration management and continuous deployments. I used to be a founder, founding member of the Eclipse Foundation, and now I am um, a board member of the CD Foundation, who's really, really pushing these conversations. You can follow me on Twitter at Tracy Reagan or at my LinkedIn at Tracy Reagan OMS. And I encourage you to learn more about catalogs. The Linux Foundation has two open source projects. One is Artilius through the incubating through the CD Foundation and Backstage, which is a sandbox project through the uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Thank you so much for listening. I hope I have stimulated some thought and let's solve this problem together. Thanks.